These are images of victory for the Taliban. This deadly attack in Kabul is part of its wave of bombings across Afghanistan. The Taliban doesn't control the capital, but it continually attacks it. Attacks elsewhere in the country have grown in frequency and ferocity. The Taliban controls roughly 13% of Afghanistan, while the government is in charge of 36%. More than half the country is contested between the government and Taliban. This week, Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani flew to Geneva for a UN conference with the aim of finding a political solution to the 17-year conflict. The conference was held at a critical time for the fledgling democracy. Presidential elections in the spring are key to successful peace negotiations. The Afghan people need an elected government with a mandate to obtain ratification, implement the peace agreement and lead the societal reconciliation process. The Taliban didn't attend the conference. It refuses to deal directly with the Afghan government and says it will only negotiate with the United States. The Taliban's determination to assert its authority over Afghanistan is matched by international partners' resolve to end it. A Taliban commitment to a peaceful outcome is long overdue. We call on the Taliban to commit to a ceasefire and appoint an authoritative negotiating team. For our part, America continues its support for an Afghan-led and Afghan-owned process. Peace in Afghanistan is possible, and we must all seize this opportunity. President Donald Trump has expressed fatigue over the continuing U.S. military presence in Afghanistan. By September, the U.S. coalition had dropped more than 5,200 bombs on the country, the most in any year since records began in 2004. It's led to a spike in civilian casualties. Those, coupled with ongoing Taliban attacks, means the Afghans are continuing to shift through the rubble of a stalled peace process. Nick Davis-Jones, TRT World.